The most popular modifiers for methods are the virtual override pair, abstract, and static. In this lesson, I'll show you how and when to use them. So the first modifiers I want to talk about are virtual and override, which always occur together. A virtual method is in the base class and will always be used unless it is overridden by a method in a subclass. This gives you a very powerful cascading effect of functionality. Let me show you how this works. Let's say we have a person class and a customer class which inherits from that and an employee class which inherits from person class as well. So let's make the person class first. Public class person. And then we have the employee class. Public class employee. And an employee is a type of person. And we also have a customer, which is a type of person. And the person has a first name as well as a last name. So these are available in employee and customer too because they're subclasses and these are public. So if we say employee, employee, employee equals new employee, we can define the first name and last name. First name equals Jim and last name equals Smith. Now let's say we want to get a name tag from the person employee or from the employee or the customer. We can put in person a method which returns a name tag. So public string get name tag. And on the name tag will be a first name plus last name, last name. And so if we write this out, employee get name tag, and we run it, then it does indeed say first name, last name. Now let's say we decide though that for employees, we don't want to put the first name and the last name, but just the first name, since it's a little more informal. Then what we do is we say, this is a virtual method. And by defining it as virtual, it just means that it'll be used unless it is overridden by one of the subclasses. So it'll still work just the way it did because it's not being overridden. But if we go into the employee class and we say public override and Visual Studio will help us here, get name tag, and it gives us the base of what we need to create here as the method. And we say here, return just the first name. And we run it. Indeed, it only returns a first name because it is an employee. If we had a customer, let me just copy in a customer here. So we have the same thing, customer equals new customer, first name, and get name tag. What's going to be displayed for Joe Thompson's name tag? Because he's a customer, it's going to go here and say, I don't have a get name tag. Base class, you do it. And so it'll just be first name and last name. We run it, and indeed it says Joe Thompson. Now we could, in the same way, override this one. Public, override, and Visual Studio is our friend. And we say return, for instance, Mr. We'll assume that they're all men for now. The last name. And so if it's a customer, he's has on his name tag a more formal name. So that's how virtual and override work in base classes and subclasses. Now note that we still can instantiate a person. So if we instantiate a person like this, person equals new person, first name, last name, and then print name tag, what's going to happen? Well, it's an actual person here, so it will execute the get name tag inside person, which happens to be virtual. And it does. But let's say in your application scenario, you really will never instantiate a person. The person is just there to be the sub or to be the base class of the employee and the customer. Then you could make this abstract like that. And because it's abstract, it has no body. It's just saying this method needs to be inherited in subclasses, which it is here. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get an error. And the error is that get name tag is abstract, but it's contained in a non-abstract class. Ah, so that actually makes sense. 
we need to make the class abstract as well because the person will never be instantiated. And so now we have an abstract class, an abstract method. Let's run it. And now it says cannot create an instance of an abstract class or interface. If we go there, we see that this code fails because as we mentioned, our application scenario calls for not instantiating a person. But the rest of the code works. You can have employees and customers. And so that is the use of the abstract modifier. So that was abstract. And now we have one more, which is static. And what do static methods do? They are quite different from the other methods, virtual, override, and abstract, and regular methods, because they do not need an instantiated object to be called. And a good use of this is factory type of method, which creates an object. And so in our case here, we would have that on person, and it would be called something like create. So it's public, static. I'm going to return a person, and it's going to be called create. And I'm going to get a string, which will be either employee or customer, whatever they want to create, and then pass me the first name and the last name. Now I just need to make a switch statement based on kind. So case it is employee, then employee, employee equals new employee, employee first name equals first name, and employee last name equals last name. And that's what we have to return because we're returning a person, but an employee is a type of person, so it's no problem here. And because we're returning, we don't need the break here. And we just need to do the same thing with customer. So here we have customer, we're doing the same thing. And if they try to create something else, we'll just return a null for now. So now we can change the way we create these objects. So for instance, this employee here, I can say employee, employee equals, and then person, create, and you see that this method exists on the class, not on the object that was instantiated from the class, but on the class itself. So we say create, and then what does it need? Ah, it needs the type, okay, it's an employee, and the name is... Jim, and the last name is Smith, and that's all we need. And the employee is created. But it has a problem here. It's saying that an explicit conversion exists, cannot convert type person to employee. Ah, because in create, if we go there, go to definition, create is sending back a person. But we're defining an employee. An employee is a type of person. We just have to tell it that. So we should say person create, so get a person as an employee, and then the compiler's happy. So we don't need this anymore, and this should work exactly the same way. And it does. So in this lesson, you saw how the most common method modifiers work. The virtual override pair, abstract, and static.